which is back up here, and it's saying take the last value of the previous value of the sum, so the one from the previous loop or here if it hasn't looped around, and say plus uh, the ith, the nth, well, ith element of the vector. So basically for the first loop, it would come through and it would say sum is equal to zero. So this is equal to zero here plus vector and ii. So ii will be one initially. So it will take the first element of the vector and add it to the previous value of sum, which in this case is zero. And then that's going to then re up, then upload back into sum. Okay. So you're going to basically be updating sum for each loop. And basically this will end up summation, summating over the entire, over the entire vector. Uh, one thing to be aware is with Mat, with MATLAB, while generally you say that your first element in your matrix is the zeroth element. So like the very first one is, uh, say vector, in this case, vect zero. MATLAB doesn't actually start at zero for matrices. It starts at one. It's just something to be aware of. So I'll show, I'll demonstrate what happens in a minute. And this is why I started my counter at one, my four counter at one and not at zero. Okay. And then so finally, basically just so I spit out the result, you'll see what happens in a second. Um, I want to say result is equal to sum. Okay. Now I'm going to save that and I'm going to run it. Okay. And you see result equals 12. And so if you look up here, so it's going to start at three and go up to five. So three plus four, seven plus five, 12. And that's what we get down here. So sweet. Now what I want to do here is now just show you what happens if I did start this at zero and only went up to n minus one. Okay. Um, what's going to happen is this error is going to occur. So subscript indices must be either real, positive integers or logicals. So that's what I was talking about before. Basically your matrices, your first element, your variant, um, doesn't actually start at zero like in usual uh, C++ if you've done any C++ or in general mass you generally call your first element the zeroth element. It actually starts at one. Okay. And also, I oh know that's basically it. Uh, now another good thing to use in scripts is see how you get all this cluttering in your command prompt. That's all well and great but it kind of annoys me. And you also notice that these are all here, possibly things that you don't want. What you can use is three other MATLAB commands that are pretty cool. Okay, so you can use close all. Basically, they'll close anything that has that's open by MATLAB. So if you have a picture open or something like that, um, it's just a good thing to get a habit, habit of doing. Clear all. So that clears any variables in your workspace that might mess up with your script. They shouldn't, but it's always a good habit to get in. And CLC basically clears the command prompt. So for example, if I do them down here in the command prompt window, you'll see what happens. So close all doesn't do anything in this case because we have no figures open. Clear all. You notice that the workspace is now cleared. And then CLC will clear that command window. So I like putting those at the start of my script files just to clear anything there. So make sure that nothing messes up. Uh, you don't have to, but I would recommend it. Another good thing to know is if you use a percent sign, you basically can put it in a comment. So it's something that that doesn't affect your code whatsoever. Um, okay, so you might say it's a good habit to get into into uh, commenting in code, just so that if you come back to it in a week's time or maybe even longer, you actually understand what your code was meant to be doing. Otherwise, you might get a bit, bit in trouble. So we're just So basically what we're doing in this section of code is checking to see if A is larger than B um, to determine how we want to create our vector. Okay. Okay, and the for loop is basically summing all the elements in the vector. This one here is initialize uh, the sum variable and sure it starts at zero. Zero. Okay, and I 
Uh, this one down here is basically just allowing, just spitting the result out, the result out to the user. Okay, and so this is the beauty of scripts. Uh, basically, we've written all this code, but say then we want to come back and change these two variables to say maybe six and five, uh, rather than uh, three and five. Basically, we can now run this thing again. Ooh, gotta make sure that I change this. <coughs> okay, so in that one there, what's happened? Oh, sorry guys, I just found the error in the code. Uh, this is kind of stupid. A less than B, B greater than A. It's going to be the same thing. So basically, you want to should really have this around the other way. My bad, sorry. Okay, so now that should be fine. But it's not. Ah, oh. there we go. Finally. Okay, and you get a result of 11. Okay, which is to be expected. You should also notice basically if you put in two of the same numbers, the way we've written this, we'll get a result of zero. Okay, so that's basically how uh, MATLAB works in terms of scripts. Uh, hopefully that helps.